Shalom, shalom to everybody out there. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Uh, everybody can, that can hear this has already been blessed by the Most High. He has awakened you to be your one and true only God, your sovereign power. And under that authority, that authority of his, he has given you the best king that you can have. Christ the king to rule under a monarchy, not a democracy, where everybody that follows the king will indeed live in righteousness. So big shalom, shalom to everybody out there. Shalom, brother, shalom indeed. Hope you're having a fantastic evening. Um, but I don't want to hold it up. The topic is why you are biblically confused. So, drum roll. Main reason why people are biblically confused is because they are listening to people that does not have a solid foundation in the Bible. And now, this is mainly people that has a following and you tend to flock to those people because a lot of people are listening to them. Well, Hitler did the same thing. So you gotta ask yourself, does a following means truth? Does a following mean understanding? Does just because you have a posse, that does, does that mean that you're learning the truth? Of course it does not. So, I would say what everybody needs to redo, if we're talking about from a biblical foundation, I love this uh, this Facebook right here because this is my biblical Facebook. I have one dealing with uh, my Tennessee people, my Mississippi people, but here this is my foundation. This is my soil to keep me uh, uh, rooted and grounded. This is what I put most of my, uh, my effort into which is spreading that everlasting gospel of the truth. And within the everlasting gospel of the truth, we have the Holy Bible as that water that is supposed to bring all of us life. The problem is, a lot of people don't like what that water does. A lot of people doesn't like that, that the offspring or the sprout that their water forms because what their water do it gives you nurture and it gives you life but sometimes it doesn't give you the life that you expected it to have no you're going to grow up like the seed that you're supposed to grow up as you're not going to grow up as the seed that you want to be or you think you deserve to be no you got to be the seed that the most high have you as and you have to uh, make the best out of that. So, what am I saying here? Am I just saying words? No. What I'm saying is that there's a lot of people out there that does not want to deal with the facts of the matter that the Bible is a history book of an ancient society and how that ancient society interacted with their God and how we benefit today from their ancient society and its interactions with its God making that ancient society's God our God and Father. So a lot of people don't want to grasp the history aspect of the Bible. They want it to be more culturally relevant more time relevant and that is the problem once you try to update update the bible and make it be about your cultural norms instead of the culture of the israelites thousands of years ago then you have room for error you have room for uh false doctrines and etc this is why we have so much confusion going on dealing with how we're supposed to take this holy bible how we're supposed to eat it and how we're supposed to learn from it you people are distraught 
about the historical setting and context of the scriptures. They're so distraught about it that they could see words like Babylon and Egypt and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Jerusalem and temple and forever and generation. They could take words like that and make it be about America or our time frame. They can literally see the ancient Hebrew words right there. And they can literally read it in context and find out that ancient, that ancient Hebraic audience in context. And they don't like the life that they get from that. No, they want to have a different type of life the life that they have uh, mentally. But what they don't understand is with that life that you're wanting getting, if you want to use the Bible and update it to our time period, you don't understand. There's a lot of heartache and pain that comes with that everlasting life that you think that you want to get. You want it to be about you. Once again, there's a lot of captivities. There's a lot of bloodshed. There's a lot of pillaging. There's a lot of raping. There's a lot of famines. There's a lot of pestilences. There's a lot of war on top of war in order to make the Bible be about our time period. You have to have all of these things to come to place before the everlasting kingdom comes. See, what they try to do is they look at all the wars and all the negative stuff in the Bible and then they leave it there in the historical setting. But all of the blessings that come or resulted from all of that carnage they want to throw that into our time period. So they separate the destruction from the blessings by thousands of years because they don't like that life that is produced from leaving it in a historical context. See, in the historical context, you have, then you have resurrection. Once again, you have destruction of the dead ones, the people who fell short, but then you have a remnant, and that remnant comes, which is a representation of the resurrection. All death, all curses, all being destroyed, a remnant comes back to life, bringing up all the people who did not get killed, who did not get destroyed, and they're able to say, this, this is the... Sorry, y'all, I'm in the trees, so internet going to cut in and out. That's just what it's going to do while I'm in this situation in the, uh, the place that I'm at. So, but y'all know me. I can just talk to myself and go back and relook at it later on. Or other people can. So, let me continue. So, they don't like that, that life that comes with believing the Bible because if you leave the Bible in a historical setting, right, what do you have to look forward to today if all the prophecies have already been accomplished and we don't have to worry about no more wars no more bloodshed in order for righteousness to prevail what do we in 2019 benefit from the bible very simple the kingdom of God. That was the whole point from the beginning. From Genesis through Revelation, the point was to get the Father and mankind back in, on speaking terms individually so he could be our God. In the beginning, from Moses' account, 
dealing with Abraham. I mean, not Abraham, sorry. Dealing with Adam. Wrong A. Dealing with Adam from Moses' account. What happened? From the beginning, mankind was doing good. And then we transgressed and it separated us from the Father. No more access to the Garden of Eden, AKA the Holy of Holies. No more tabernacling with the Father for mankind. No more having dominion and dominance. So, how was that supposed to occur? Well, since a lot of sin took place, and death was able to start reigning and all of that stuff, a lot of atonement had to take place for sins. The Father set the course. Bloodshed had to occur in order for me to forgive you enough to reward you. So, that was the whole, I mean, this is just my understanding. I share this view. Nobody else might not share this view. This is just for me, a similar sound doctrine. This is my understanding. So, from my understanding, this is what I'm bringing out. So, from Genesis to Revelation, it was all about mankind's sin be atoning for. 2019 we don't need an atonement for our sins hey if you trust the father you don't trust the father no atonement is needed judgment will still occur but no blood atonement is needed you don't have to get struck down immediately by transgressing the commandment. You don't have to worry about going into another captivity. You don't have to worry about being destroyed. In 2019, you can be the most wickedest man on earth and still have blessings because in this time period, blessings and curses are placed upon the individual's actions and their judgment would come whenever the father sees fit you don't have to worry about a nation coming to destroy a lot of people just because a few of the brothers and sisters are off the point is freedom today you have freedom no more wrath no more destruction now, if you want to know how we got to this point of no more wrath, no more destruction, then I would open up those old historical references and, and, and et cetera that you call the Bible, and I would teach from them. But we're free. You're living life. And the only way that you're not free is people teach you that you're not free. The problem is too many people are on the wrong doctrine because they don't want that water given to them. They don't want to live. They want a made up world where made up things happen. That's not, that's not how it works, y'all. Come under the umbrella. Understand all things have been fulfilled. Preach, teach the kingdom of heaven. Love your neighbor, love the father, be baptized. Food, give food to the hungry. Clothe the naked. Do right by the homeless, the poor. Have a contrite heart. Be meek in spirit. Don't be puffed up. Don't be full of pride. Display the government of the Father. 
that's it point blank here hopefully this little uh talk can help you maybe it will maybe it won't maybe you'll look at it maybe you won't it is what it is just know i put it out there shalom